Okay, please uh, excuse any filming awkwardness. What we're gonna try to do here is give you real bare bones, but strong basics on how to approach these free response questions in the APC mechanics. So we've been making this analogy to the four square lately. So let's do it right here. Draw yourself out a big square. Uh -huh. It's a little sloppy here. It's actually gonna be a rectangle. Doesn't matter. Split it up. Okay, there we go. Looks like a sloppy window. We made a house like this once upon a time. All right, we've covered four basic units. We've done kinematics. We've done dynamics. That was forces. We've done work, energy, power. And we've done momentum, impulse. Okay, we are not attempting to do a summary of the entire term thus far in this box, but we are attempting to give ourselves a little bit of a refresher on the toolkit essentials. All right, so within kinematics, you know, this is Gruber called this the VDAT. You know, you're essentially dealing with those four physical quantities. All right, from last year, from Regents, you had the basics. Acceleration was delta V over delta T. That's average acceleration, average speed. Is that change of position per change in time? Fine. We also had the instantaneous versions of these. A was dV over dT, and V was dx over dT. So just beware, if given a function x, if you take the derivative with respect to time, you can get the instantaneous velocity function. If given a velocity function, even that one you just derived, you can again take derivative with respect to time. Just a little bit of a, a misstatement, but whatever, that's what you're doing. You'll get your instantaneous acceleration function. You also can do integrals. So if you rearrange this one right here, uh, what you can find and rearrange this one right here also, so it kind of works the other way around now, but if we do a, an integral of, bring this dt up to the a, you have your integral of your dv on the other side. Basically, this is your delta v is the integral of a dt. And of course, you can do that with this one too. So v dt, integral of dx, these are from time to time. So zero to time, and so your change in position will just be this integral of V dt, okay? So these are all just basic math, and most of the functions you dealt with are pretty easy. Beware that we also did a little graphical analysis within this, and our graphical analysis is still Dr. Sarf, and particularly slope and area, focus on what's happening with those two. Okay, now, one of the things we started practicing this unit was linearizing the data and then using that to generate a slope to figure out some physical quantity, often a little g. Okay, there were our kinematics. Fine. Uh, next, we did dynamics. The, probably the key piece of the dynamics is the free body diagram, FBD. Like, let's not waste time. Put the dot and draw the forces on it. Stop playing around. If there are multiple forces, multiple dots, force, put them all on there. Remember that... Uh, Tensions within a single rope canceled. Remember that tensions tended to cancel. And the different forces you tended to see were tension, friction, weight, normal force, sometimes the force applied. You know, those are kind of the basics showed up most of the time. Now, once you had your free body diagram, you had to do a sum of forces. So sum of the forces equaled, and you basically then put all your forces in here add them together, and then in your substitution line, so then we would substitute, and when you substituted, it depended on the scenario. If it was equilibrium, then this sum of the forces would then be zero equals whatever, plus whatever, minus whatever. If it were accelerating, so not equilibrium, then you would put MA on this side as whatever, plus whatever, minus whatever. Okay. So uh, the other piece to keep in mind here 
was that sometimes our sum of forces were given in multiple dimensions. So you might have a sum of forces in the X and a sum of forces in the Y. That was a common one. Another common one was a sum of forces parallel and a sum of forces perpendicular that tended to show up on the ramp. And a common one was circular motion, sum of forces centripetal, and a sum of forces tangential. This was circular motion. Um, so uniform circular motion was only this one. That was your UCM. But non-uniform circular motion included that tangential force. And then if you ever needed to get the net force resultant of the whole thing, you would do the square root of F x squared plus fy squared or parallel perpendicular or centripetal and tangential doesn't matter or the acceleration if you ever needed the net acceleration the same thing now that didn't come up that often but when it did it often caught people sleeping all right let's go over here work energy power probably the simplest thing was the conservation of mechanical energy so often our scenarios are uh, frictionless for part of the problem and so when that was the case, you know, we did our potentials plus our kinetics initially equaled our potentials plus our kinetics finally. Um, we tended to introduce our work, work done by some external or non-conservative force here led to a change in kinetic energy of our system. And so that was a common piece we used. Uh, we then often would pull in here, oh, just as a reminder, be careful with your deltas. So delta K is K final minus K initial. Delta U, U final minus U initial. Particularly for the spring or for kinetic energy, since these two depended on a squared term, just make sure you're thinking of the delta like this, because sometimes people slip the delta into the equation and just square the change and it turns out to be wrong. All right, anyway, work we knew back from readings was this dot product, average force times D, which meant FD cos theta, and we also said that was a change in total energy. That was from uh, Regents right there. But beware, this cosine theta term was basically an alignment term. If F and D are aligned, this came out to positive. Fully aligned, it was zero degrees, it came out to positive one. If they were unaligned, like at 90 degrees to each other, then the work term came out to zero. And if they were anti-aligned, like opposite each other, this came out to negative. So you could have negative work. Beware that what we used in regions, we said it, but it wasn't written, is we used an average force. As it turns out, we can deal with force as a function of position. And when that was the case, your force is a function of position. You can do an integral from zero to X or wherever it's going. And that would give you your work done here, which could also be your change in energy. In fact, usually the one that we talk about is change in kinetic energy, but... You know, there it is, change in energy. Uh, beware, we talked about conservative forces. The only two we talked about were FS and FG. And so when you're looking at the work done with a conservative force, it always causes a change in potential energy. So that potential energy was negative, that conservative force put fs comma g it's going to be one of those dx and of course you could rearrange this that fs or g was negative du dx and we had looked at that with some of those potential energy curves so you know beware in case that were to show up on something okay now let's go to the unit we're working on momentum and impulse also center of mass is part of this but it's, that tends to be a lighter question um, not a heavy part of the free, free response questions so uh, here we go. The key one here is the conservation of momentum. As long as you don't have any uh, external forces here, you're good to go with your conservation of momentum. Commonly used, of course. Oh, let me point it out. You know, this one's commonly used when you have a, a change in position or when you go from speed to height or from height to speed or from spring to speed or from spring to height or any of those scenarios, right? This one is commonly when you have masses and velocities and you either have some sort of collide or explode collision or explosion something like that all right so it's pretty straightforward to use same as it was last year uh, we had this equation from last year j is f net t 
delta P is M delta V. Now this M delta V is not technically correct. This is for a, a single object because really it should be delta M delta V. Um, but most of our objects, you'll focus on single objects when doing this. And uh, this here was really a constant or an average net force on this. And so as with everything else we've done, if that force is actually a function of time, as it changes with time, you can do an FDT from zero to whatever time, and that would be your change in momentum. And further, if you need to make this infinitesimal, you could even say the F net at any particular moment is shrink that, you know, we had delta P over delta T, and that'll give you an average net force, but if you need an instantaneous, it's gonna be DP, DT, all right? So this right here kind of gives you a nice way to approach these problems. Now your free response questions you'll see tend to combine these big ideas in some way. Uh, the things we have not done yet, they're gonna add in too, but these are really the backbone of what we're doing.